a large proportion of my audience has been young men, young, you know, under 30, something like that. And I've spoken to them a lot about responsibility. And what's so odd about, about this is that of all the things that I've spoken about, because I can see the audience and I can feel how the audience is reacting, because I'm always paying attention to all of you it's, it's, insofar as I can manage that. So I, I, I get some sense of how what I'm saying is landing, you know, which you have to do if you're going to speak effectively to people. And what, what happens is if I talk about responsibilities, everyone be, is silent, just like they are now. Silent and, and not moving, right? Focusing, attentive. Say, pick up your responsibility. Pick up the heaviest thing you can and carry it. And the room goes quiet and everybody's eyes open. And I think, that always makes me break up. I was... I don't, I don't know why I was speaking to an English journalist today who was going to write a, an article in Spectator magazine and I was talking about this and at the same point in the discussion, the same, I had the same emotional reaction. I don't really understand it. It's, I think it's something, it, there's something about it that's so crucial because, you know, we've been fed this unending diet of rights and freedoms and there's something about that, especially, there's something about that that's so pathologically wrong and people are starving for the antidote, and the antidote is truth and responsibility, right? And it, it, isn't, it isn't because that's what you should do in some, you know, in some, some I know better or someone knows better for you what you should do sense. It's that, it's that, it's that, it's that that's the secret to a meaningful life, and without a meaningful life, then all you have is suffering and, and nihilism and despair and all of that and self-contempt, and, and that's not good. And, so the men, it's necessary for men to stand up and take responsibility. And they all know that and, and are starving for that message. And, and the message is more that that's also a good thing to stand up and take responsibility because you're cursed so much now from, 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 from when you're young with this notion that your active engagement with the world is part of what is destroying and undermining the planet and adding to the tyranny of the social systems. It's like, how about not so much of that, hey? Because it's, 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 it's too soul-deadening. It's anti-human right to the core. And my sense instead is that, you know, if you, if you were able to reveal the best of yourself to you in the world, that you would be an overwhelming force for good. Um, I read... A fascinating interview with you and you were talking about the plight of young men and how guys really need to get their act together. Um, you went on to say the lack of an identifiable and compelling path forward and the denialism these kids are being fed on a daily basis and undoubtedly destroying them and that is especially true of the young men. Uh, this show we've covered widely the fact that suicide is the biggest killer of young men under the age of 45 in this country. It goes on in the interview to say, at this point, to my astonishment, Peterson begins to weep. He yeah, well, it says, see, now it did it to me again. Look, last night, you know, I was at this talk I gave, and about a thousand people came, and about 500 of them stayed afterwards, and most of them were young men, you know, and just one of them after the other comes up to me, and they shake my hand, and they say, look, I've been listening to what you've been saying for six months, and it's changed my life. It's like I was depressed. I was addicted to drugs. Uh, my relationships weren't working out. I was hopeless. I didn't have any goal. I started cleaning up my room and telling the truth and working hard on myself, and it's really working, and I just want to thank you for helping me. And I think, God, it's so, it's so sad that so many of these men, you know, they've not had an encouraging bloody word, a real encouraging word in their entire life. It just takes a little bit of, of encouragement and care so that they're willing to set themselves straight to some degree and start trying. It's just a catastrophe that that's, that's so rare in their lives. And so, yeah, well, every time, you see, because I see the same thing when I'm talking, my audiences are often composed mostly of men between, say, 20 and 35, not exactly young, but young enough. 
and they're desperate for a discussion about responsibility and fair play and noble being and working properly in the world and the idea and, and to hear the idea that their lives actually matter that if they straighten themselves up and fly right that they'll have a beneficial effect on themselves and their family and the community and that that the world is starving for that and and for them as individuals not for them as a group but for each of them as individuals so yeah, it breaks me up. Every time it, Every time the topic comes up, it breaks me up because it's so damn sad. And we're so stupid. We're alienating young men. We're telling them that they're patriarchal oppressors and denizens of rape culture and, and, and you know, tyrants in waiting. And, that, and we fail to discriminate between their competence and their tyranny. And it's just, it's awful. It's so destructive. It's so unnecessary. And it's so sad. And so whenever I think about it, especially because of all that I've seen of it, it's, it makes me sad, like deeply. It's so sad. Why has it happened? Oh, God, that's a complicated question. I mean, well, it's partly happened because every culture has a tyrannical element, you know. I mean, our culture isn't perfect. There is oppressive elements to it. It's not completely fair. So some of it is just the age-old observation that... You don't get a culture without a bit of a tyranny. Um, a lot of it is resentment and, and failure to take responsibility. You know, it's people saying, instead of looking at the part they play and making the world a dark and terrible place, they blame something like the patriarchy and then assume that all the men who compose it are somehow malevolent tyrants or tyrants in waiting. It's like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's ideological possession. It's, and it's, there's just no excuse for it. It's so does, motivated by resentment. Does mostly. feminism have a role to play in that? Well, it depends on how you define feminism. If it's the feminism that says, wouldn't it be lovely if women could offer what they have to the world so that the world would be a better place on the same footings as men? Well, no, that's, that's great. If it's the feminism that says that Western culture is an evil, corrupt patriarchy, then absolutely there's no excuse for that sort of thing. And it completely dominates the universities, especially in the humanities. Like we really believe, most left-wing academics believe that the, that the Western culture is a corrupt patriarchal tyranny. I mean, God, wake up. Most governments in the world are run by thugs, absolute thugs. They'll kick in your door and kill you in your sleep. In the West, we have, well, a wonderful civilization. People are as free as they've ever been. You can, you, can live, you can live well here as an individual. And to consider that, you know, a corrupt patriarchal tyranny and to lay that at the feet of young men and then to tell them that they have to be discriminated against because of the systemic, uh, the systemic let's say, racism and misogyny of the past. It's just, it's appalling. And men are bailing out of universities at a rate. This is not my opinion. I've been tracking these statistics for 15 years. Men are bailing out of universities at a rate you just would not believe. There won't be a man left in the humanities in 15 years at this rate. All you have to do is look at the trends. It's, it's quite obvious and it's no wonder. So, and it's just appalling. And I've also been described as misogynist because, you know, I've been trying to strengthen young men. It's like, of all the ridiculous ideas that strengthening young men is somehow misogynist. I mean, God, how can, it's just, I can't even believe what you would have to think to think that that was a good idea.